Hello. Welcome to the last installment. Welcome to my kitchen again. How are you? Hope you're well. Happy Thursday. It's been roasting in Sydney. Well, Sydney. I don't live in Sydney. It's been, roasting. It's been quite warm in Melbourne today. Lovely little shorts and shirts weather. So I hope you're uh, feeling the warmth coming into December, into the summer. Pinching a punch for the third day of the month. Uh, where's everyone tuning in from? Shoot us your locations. Uh, anything interesting? Anyone from Dubbo? You know, uh, David's from Dubbo. He might be tuning in. Perth? Yes. Hey, Mariska, how are you? It's good to see you again. Goldie? Yes. Oh, my gosh. How's the Gold Coast, by the way? It must be so beautiful up there right now. The waves. The waves. Surfing. Cannot wait to go surfing again. Sydney. Yes, Sydney, of course. Albion Park Rail. Hello. That's awesome. Well, this is fantastic. I like it. I like it a lot. Who else we got? Who else on the call? There's a lot of people watching. Chuck in where you are from. I want to see. I want to see how far we reach. We'll wait another couple of minutes and then we'll get started. The final one, the dessert. This is actually one of my favorites. I reckon this, this recipe will follow me around uh, for quite some time. Yes. It is delicious. It's completely plant-based. Not that matters. You guys can do um, whatever you like. Just substitute tofu with cream. That'll work just fine. So is Lentil helping today? Lentil is having her dinner. She's having a late dinner. Uh, we do a scatter because she's a golden retriever. She eats so fast that she that she ends up having the hiccups for the next 10 minutes afterwards. Um, <laughs> she hiccups for ages and... She, we can't give her a bowl of food because within 10 seconds, it's all gone. So we scatter feed on our balcony. Um, we scatter, bit, scatter feed on our balcony, which is about 10 meters long and just at least takes I don't know, maybe 10 minutes to eat that, maybe give or take. We also have this thing called a snuffle mat, which is like a very shaggy carpet. Uh, and you hide all the food in there. And, that, and then she takes ages to eat that too. So that's, that's what we do. But she is, she is having dinner. She'll be back in soon, I'm sure, ready to play because she goes for the zoomies after she eats. Um, all right. Might as well get started. Look at the kitchen. My partner helped me today get this already. Looks so much better than normal. The light is still there. But we are talking all about alternative natural style sweeteners outside the regular. And I have the regular as well, you know. Caster sugar. Ugh. I didn't use it for a while, as you can tell. Caster sugar, we all know it, right? And then you kind of do that sort of thing. Oh, let's go something less refined. And so you go to raw sugar. Huzzah. You know, that's the kind of like the next thing is raw sugar from caster sugar. Hey, Shelly, how are you? Good to see you here. Welcome, welcome. We're talking about sugars. Um, and they have their purpose. They have their place. You know, they're, they're both... Uh, great in their own way. But let's look outside that and let's look more towards some of the great other natural sweeteners we can turn to. And if anyone has any funny ones out there, if I don't mention them, send them through. I know things like xylitol and stevia, really good ones, great, uh, really good health uh, benefits. Um, stevia uh, from a plant, xylitol um, from birch or corn, uh, which is really, really cool. They're great ones to have. I love. Um, hey, Sandra, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming along. Uh, Repidura, if anyone doesn't know this and everyone hasn't tried this, get it. This is the stuff, right? Here we go. This is how, this is, I mean, I'm not going to say bougie because it's not. It's really delicious. Um, yes, exactly right. That's right. That's, that's one of them. But this is awesome because when you go to like the cool bougie coffee, you know, everyone has like, I don't know if anyone here is coffee lovers. Put your hands up if you're coffee lovers for sure. Um, I absolutely am. And then when you go to those really good coffee shops where they give a crap about what they serve you, you know, then, uh, hi, Irene, how are you? Welcome. Thanks for coming. And everyone, please chat away. You know the rules. We've done this before. A lot of you are, are, return, are return watchers and I'm, and I'm honored that you're back again. It makes me so, so happy. Um, and of course, if you're buying from the source, you've got to be coffee lovers. You know, they've got their own coffee there as well and teas for sure. Uh, but they have both. Uh, where was I? Oh, that's right. You go to the good coffee shops. 
and they have this dark sugar, like kind of sticky sugar, um, hanging out the front uh, or, you know, where you put your coffee in. That's repertoire. It's really unrefined. So you basically get your cane juice, um, you cook it down and then you, and then you, and you dry it out and blitz it up and that is it. And it's super molassesy. It hasn't got that rich, uh, which you'll see. Oh, amazing. Uh, hey, Jennifer, how are you? Um, and Margaret, hello, how are you? Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, and it's super, super molassesy. So it works really well with coffee. And it also works really well with dark, rich teas. Like, you know, I mean, a good sort of breakfasty style tea that you'd, you'd have sugar with if you, if you are that kind of, if you are that way inclined. Um, but Repadura is awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. I love it. If you haven't tried it, give it a go. It doesn't melt the same way as all the other sugars do. So you need a little higher temperature, uh, which is a great one. Um, xylitol. Is, oh, sorry, xylitol is one of them. This is our Repadura. S. Oh, you can't see them. There you are. Is that back to front for you? Because it's back to front for me. But S for sugar, by the way. So don't put an S at the end of it. Uh, but that's what that is. It's an unrefined, really dark, molassesy, uh, rich sugar. Hey, mom. <laughs> Therese, welcome. Um, and then I've already used a lot of this. This is, uh, this is coconut sugar. Um, brilliant, brilliant. Whoever thought of this for a waste product of, of coconut, because obviously it's really high in sweetener. It is a, it is a great, great sugar. Really good for banana breads. Uh, really good for any sort of fruit cakes. It works really well. It's kind of like that wonderful complement to, to that style of thing. Maple syrup. I mean, we all know maple syrup. Waffles, pancakes in the morning. You know, my dad used to put it on, uh, on his ice cream at night. Oh, it just brings back memories. It is so delicious. Um, you know, I'm sure everyone knows that. From the maple tree, uh, obviously Canadian, um, and they tap the tree, sap comes, or the liquid comes, and that is what you get. Uh, another one, agave. Now, I know a lot of people, I mean, agave was a massive hit at one stage, and everyone was going on about it about five, ten years ago. Agave was here, just my father, I'm looking at, by the way, <laughs> looking down the, I'm looking down the hallway. Um, but, yeah, agave was huge, and then it had this big sort of, like, wheel where they decided that it wasn't great anymore, and, you know, oh, it's all bad for you, but it's, it's a beautiful form of sweetener. And agave, actually, uh, if you think of the blue agave, uh, is what they make tequila from. So agave is uh, a plant. It's actually from the lily family, not cactus. Um, I'm going to pull a photo of an, of an agave plant. Let's see if I can do that while I'm here. I'll do this quickly. Ready? Just so you know what it looks like. Agave plant. Let's see, we go. Plant. And then there we go. Images. So people get mistaken. Here we go. And it grows like it grows kind of everywhere. You get so many different. There's I don't know. I'm not going to say how many numbers of varietals of agave there are. There's so many, um, but they are from the lily family, not the cactus family, which is a big misconception. And for those, a little bit of a uh, side note for a bit of pub trivia: agave is what you make tequila from. So blue agave it makes tequila. It's a type of agave. And then there's a lot of other different types of um, agave that makes different types of, um, well, Mexi Mexican style spirit or like a agave spirit. Uh, can Agave spirit can be made everywhere, but tequila has to be made in the regions of tequila they chose. And xylitol, not the, um, not the sweetener, but xylitol is a type of spirit as well. <laughs> oh, trivia is with Simon on Thursday. Hello. Um, Right, where are we? I'm just gonna check. Love maple. Yes, I agree. Gaba, yes. Awesome. Any other questions? I'm gonna jump straight into it. So today's dish is going to be this free, free formed. Try and say this really fast ten times. Free formed creme brulee. Now I've got a cool little apparatus, and I think some of you might have been here last week, which is this. You can get the, you know, I think you can get cheapies for ten us. You know what I mean? So. Just jump on board and grab one if you if you feel like it. They're really useful um, for any sort of baking and, and even savory foods as well. Uh, but it's, it's completely plant-based. So instead of using dairies, we're going down the side of the milks with a Y, or in this case, silken tofu. Now, if you think about it, I know it looks a bit jelly-like and it's a bit gross and some, some people don't like it, but if you think about cream, cream really has no, uh, necessarily no flavor. Like it picks up, you know, dairy flavors and flavors of the grass, rah, 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 you know what I mean? 
tofu is kind of the same. It's a really neutral flavor. And it's if you blend this, which is what we're going to do, it, it basically runs like thickened cream. So all we're using is this cream. Um, Como, awesome. Hello, Anne. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is going to be used as like a thickened cream. And because there's very little flavor, we're just going from what would be normally a, 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 a non-plant-based dish to a completely plant-based dish because we're also going to be using um, high cacao chocolate. Um, you know, the sauce has 85%. They have 72%. They have 70 or 65%. I'll have to double-check my numbers. Um, but they also have things like plant-based milks. They've got coconut white chocolate. They've got nut, uh, nut milk white chocolates. They've got uh, carob. <gasps> That was my childhood. I used to love carob buds. I love them. We used to get them for um, uh, uh, Friday. We used to have tuck shop on Fridays. Oof, loved a tuck shop. Mm. Anyway, I digress. Let me jump straight into it. I'm sorry. I always talk too much at the very, very start. Um, if, you're, if you're following along, I've done a few parts first just to make life a bit easier for us. Um, but I'll yell from here. Everyone can see okay. Uh, yeah, Kat, I love Kat, I love Kat so much, so, so much. Uh, is that Kat? Thank you so much. Right, in here, I'm going to come back around, I'm sorry. In here, in here, in here, in here, I've got uh, everything that I need for this uh, section of the, of the cook. There's lentil, she's obviously just eaten, so she's going wild. Um, 200 grams of really dark chocolate, like the dark chocolate from, uh, from the sauce, 85%. It is awesome, like it is my favorite. Then I've got, uh, and it's super, sorry, I keep going on. <laughs> God. Then I've got uh, the sauce coffee. I, I buy their coffee, grind it, brew it. Uh, it's really strong. I've got that in here too. I've got a tablespoon of repertoire sugar and I've got agave in here as well. So all of them are in here. Um, and then I've got a pot of water and this is called like the Bain Marie style. So you do this for a lot of chocolate work because it doesn't give a very harsh heat. It gives a softer style of heat. I've got water in a pot. Make sure the bottom doesn't touch the water. That's all you need to know and then get that onto a low simmer. Uh, and that's gonna melt the chocolate beautifully. So that's my first job. Um, I'm gonna do that now. Uh, I'll see you in two seconds. Hey people, if you have any questions, write them down. Everyone on there, beautiful. This is a welcoming community of, of food lovers and lovers of the sauce. So help other people out, answer the questions if they need it, if I can't see it and they get it first. Back in a second. I'm wearing Berkies today. I'm wearing short shorts and Berkies. This is what I do when I, when I want to hire a true comfort, but you can't really tell. <laughs> right, power on. <coughs> medium, I'm gonna put on medium. So we don't want to melt it too fast because if you melt it too fast, it shocks the chocolate and you have the possibility of it, of it breaking or splitting and that's, that's a no-go. And considering this is literally the last chocolate I have in the whole house, um, if this, if this doesn't work, yep, we'll just, we'll just talk for 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, that's gonna go. In my blender, let's get this ready now. I'm just gonna put in a silken tofu. If you don't have one of these blenders, if you have a stick blender, you know, then that works as well. Perfectly fine. Just falls in so weirdly. Um, if you have a stick blender, <laughs> that is great. So just use one of those. Uh, you can use a food processor, but it just won't get it as fine. But give it a go. Just You might have to blend it for a little bit longer. It is really, really soft, so you can kind of get away with it. Now we're looking for heat. Let's get this going. Right. Don't forget, so with this dish, we're doing this creme brulee or, you know, free form style. We're not putting it in a pot. You can if you want to. We're going to do this. This is going to be summer style, right? So we're going pineapple. We're going coconut. We're going rum, you know. Woo! Fun, fun, fun. This is... Amazing, super, super ripe, overly ripe pineapple. If you have a less ripe, probably a little bit better, but I was at the market today and this is the best I could get my hands on. So it just has that possibility. The reason why I want a little bit less ripe is because it has the possibility of it breaking down a little bit too much. I kind of like the slight acidity you get from a slightly underripe pineapple because there is a lot of richness in here, so that acidity will help. Uh, but you know, if you can't, it's not the end of the world. It will, it will be absolutely fine. I'm just going to take everything off. Um, and I don't know if the video, I don't know if you saw in the video, but if you Google at the end of this, and I'll put my knife at you, Google it at the end of this, uh, this show. Uh, George, 
Yes. What's the name of that, that Mexican drink with the pineapple skins? Tapache. Tapache. Google Tapache. T E P A C H E. So, what it is, it's a zero weight. This is exactly the idea about zero waste, which is fantastic. It's a beautiful, it's basically like a pineapple wine or a pineapple beer using pineapple skins. And so, I take this, put it in a jar, you know, whatever jar, probably not one that's full, that'll be a bit stupid. Put it in a jar uh, and then fill it with like three quarters of a cup of sugar, raw sugar. Uh, organic style sugar, any one of these actually would be perfectly fine. Preferably not a, um, uh, preferably not a liquid sugar. And then top with sugar and top with a little bit of filtered water. Maybe a chili, some cinnamon, some, some, uh, some, some star anise. Uh, put it in there and then let it ferment for a little bit. For a little bit. That's really, and that'll ferment and it'll turn into this beautiful, fizzy, pineapple y, delicious dish. And make sure you let the lid go every so often. <coughs> Otherwise, you might have an explosion. So while it's melting, I see some redness. Shirley, well, thanks. So, uh, yeah, we are going to add the science recipe to YouTube in the next few days. Amazing. Uh, this is strange. I thought they were there last week. Just seen. They're gone now. I don't know. There's pina colada. Oh, yeah, exactly. Ah, I just looked at I couldn't see them either. What are we looking at? I need to look up, don't I? I should be on the Source YouTube channel. Okay. Well, I, I think people will help out. I'll come back and chat with you later on if there's a question that I can't answer. I'm just going to make sure this doesn't burn. So we've got some boiling going on now. And the chocolate is melting beautifully. Another great way to do this is, is you know, microwave your sugars and your coffee um, and then pour it over your really – with the chocolate, I've chopped it up really fine so it melts easier. Um, it's the best way to do it. You can do it the other way if you want to, but you're going to be staying there for a triple amount of time. Just going to go. So the pineapple's there. I'm going to let that go a little bit longer. I'm going to cut it into, you know, sections, right? Obviously, there's the woody stem in the middle. So put that with your tapache. Um, that'll add a nice little flavor to it, a nice little bit of sweetness. Um, and also, the reason why it's so good is because the outside of the skin, so make sure you get organic pineapples, by the way. I cannot stress enough if you can get it. Um, turn it off because it's done. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's got beautiful, because it, it hasn't got any pesticides. You don't, have to, you don't necessarily have to wash it. Should anyway, but it'll have a lot of um, um, yeast on the outside from you know the growth stages, and it'll help do the fermentation process. <sighs> you don't need to add any yeast; it's got it on the outside. So, to parche section, no, right? No. Each bit, I'm basically going to cut them similar to that, right? I mean, you can do what you want. There, there is no rules to this dish, um, and I'll prove it to you because I'm just going to do one like that, and then I'm going to leave this one quite fat because I can, and then maybe I'll do. Uh, down here, and then I'll do a half, right? The video shows you the same style, pretty much the same style the whole way through, but this, it, it just doesn't matter so much. Um, it all comes down to how much pineapple is going to feed how many people, because in reality, a couple of pieces and a nice big bit of, um, of a bit of ganache is enough. So, you know, tea towel, hands are full of pineapple. Uh, right. Let me jump on to making it. So this is what it looks like now. Right here. You'll see it. Here we go. Oh, it's quite hot. Okay, this is silly. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. Actually, you can hear it in the background. So there it is there. So it's quite it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. Um, yeah, cool, 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 cool. It's all good. All right. Oh, yes, that's right, uh, Irene. Let me just jump to that again. Hold on one second. <laughs> in with that into the I mean it's super thick and rich it's really exciting and then give that a blitz until everything has come together so I will come around and have a look at some questions while that goes it'll be you know maybe a minute or so I start on low alright go on Here we are. Right. Putting the pan on, there's a little bit of oil in there. It's a tiny amount. Right. 
Can I put this on high now, okay? Gosh, that thing is just so hot so quickly, right? Look at this. Here we go. We're going to come your way. Look at that. Look at this. Ready? I'm just going to pour it out. Beautiful, thick style chocolate ganache, completely plant based. There's coffee in there. There's uh, two different types of sugars, uh, you know, two different types of natural sweeteners in there that are just divine. Where is my trusty red spatula? And what I'm going to do so, this is normally you can leave this at room temperature to set because the chocolate will set. Um, um, yeah, so this will set, but uh, at room temperature. However, um, I'm going to do it in the fridge because we've only got, you know, a few minutes ago. Well, not a few minutes, but enough to say it'd be better if I just put it in the fridge to set. So out flat and look at that. That is awesome. Just rich, perfect. Okay. Hum. Mm. I'll test it, yeah. Yum. Mm. Oh, there's such a little space in the fridge. Okay. Back over here. How on? Let's have a look over here. We are doing good. Menu on sear. A little bit of oil in here. Just because what we want to do, as we mentioned, I think in the last cooking sessions, um, that I just got chocolate on me. Um, the, the oil is a conductor. Now, we don't want this dish to be oily, but we want to, we want to create caramelization. If you dry cook this pineapple, what you're going to find is it will. Um, Oh, this thing is so bad, right. If we dry fry it, what you're gonna find is the pineapple will dry out because there's nothing to create that conductor of it, uh, heat transfer and all the liquid and juice and beautiful flavors from that will completely go away and the pineapple will turn rubbery and dry. There we go, right, big piece. Couple of small pieces. All in. Now, am I going to smoke out the house? That is the question. All the windows are open. If the alarm goes off, I'm sorry. I have some rum here, 50 mils of rum, and we're going to go back to the old school and we're going to use a bit of caustic because I want to make this into a beautiful pineapple car caramel. Um, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And then finally, we're going to finish off by making our, our brulee style of thing. I'm worried about the uh, fire alarm, George. <laughs> Get ready with a pillow, just in case. Now, I've also got some amazing uh, sauce bowl foods um, or coconut flakes. Yeah, it's getting good already. Yep, okay. And news is going to happen quickly. Hold on one sec, everyone. Cool. So... Uh, Induction cooker is the bane of my existence, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to name any names of who it is either that made it. Okay, cool. So that's going to cook away again. There's some color on some parts. I'll show it to you later on when I get to the end. Um, so coconut flakes, awesome. Get into the sauce. I love that. Again, coconut rum, pineapple, chocolate, mm -mm -mm -mm, different types of natural sweeteners, wicked. Uh, and then I've got some buckwheat. Now, I, this is the thing. I thought I had more buckwheat, but I used it all the other day for the video for this. Uh, but I actually, uh, I, I saved it. Thank goodness, because I'm in, you know, thank you, past me. Um, uh, yes, the tea, towel, the tea towel will definitely be pulled out, I reckon. Well, uh, hold on, try it. So all I've done is I've, if I've put the buckwheat, you can put it in the oven, fine. You can fry it in oil, fine. I did a dry pan, uh, did that, kept tossing it so it didn't burn on any one side. And then 
just before I took it off, I put the coconut on there. And because I got a lot more oils in that coconut, um, yeah, use the barbecue for pineapple as well. That's a great idea. A little bit of flame, but still brush it. It needs liquid to, uh, to you know, to survive. It's sort of like they keep that flavor. Otherwise, it will dry out. Um, so to be sure to either base it or something like that. Oh, no, I've got to stop moving so much. So, so here, uh, toasted coconut, toasted buckwheat. Come around here. Watch out, little one. Out of the kitchen. How are we looking? Yes, we are looking good. Apparently, we're only cooking one of them, though, and the rest are just hanging out. Cool. Uh, then I got some whiskey, as I said. That's going to go in here. Now, if you're using a flame uh, at home, ooh, ganache. If you're using a flame at home, uh, be really careful pouring hot alcohol, especially a high um, ABV alcohol into it because you'll find that um, you'll find that, that that could catch a light basically and uh, and you can do it if you're safe and you've done it before then you know go for it but it's really quite it can be quite dangerous so if you put the rum in there let's say we'll see before I meant rum anyway, but if you put the rum in there tilt the pan towards the flame you know high high brew alcohol will catch a light um, so please be careful if um, what sort of oil are you using uh, I am using I'm using the sources um, um, uh, organic olive oil. Olive oil. I'm only using the tiniest amount, so it's not going to impart much flavour. But there are olive oils. That is looking really hot. Yep. Yep. One day, one day this machine and I will become friends. I tell you what. Um, you're right about the dried apricots. Yeah, right. Thank you, Paul. That's awesome. I'm so glad you did that. Uh, I love how people are actually going ahead and going ahead and doing these things. All right, these are ready. So that rum's going. Oh, that rum's going in the whole time. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the rum and the castor sugar at the same time. It just makes life a little easier. Now, because I'm using induction, you won't get. Um, you won't get the same issue. So sugar in, and then some water. Punching all the animals. Yes, 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 yes. So now what we're doing is, it's kind of like a cheats version of a caramel, right? Because we're not putting the caramel in it, we're not putting the sugar in, we're taking it to a dark molasses color, then pouring rum in, then pouring, um, you know, anything else in. in the recipe, if you want to do the non-alcoholic version, if you're doing it for kids or anything like that, do that sort of way. Sugar in, wait till it goes nice and dark, uh, and then add um, uh, coconut cream. Oof, great one. The sauce doing an amazing coconut, uh, desiccated coconut, or like dehydrated coconut, just add a little bit of, little, little bit of liquid. The, the, um, the instruction on the, let's talk slower, Simon. Their instructions are on the website. Uh, so that's, that's what you can do. Um, sorry, I know, but I, my hair is so. Oh, look at this. How's that, everyone? My um, my hair is so long. I haven't been able to get a haircut at all. I'm a bit lazy like that when it comes to haircuts. I kind of don't love them. So this is what's occurring. Uh, so bring the sugar up to molasses color, then pour your coconut in. Be really careful because it will spit as it comes down, mix it through, and get a nice darkness out of it. It's a really good way of doing it. Uh, a, a vegan style, plant-based one uh, with no rum or no alcohol at all. But this one is me and my partner, so we're going to make it nice and uh, salvatorial, I guess. And I'm going to show you, as this reduces, that sugar is going to turn to that caramel colour anyway, uh, and we're going to get a beautiful sort of sticky, pineapple-flavoured, um, um, caramelised, delicious flavour. Okay. All right. Let's move this over. I'm going to see if we get some mint. Hold on. Do I have any mint? Do I have any mint? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, I have mint. Okay. Watch out, everyone. Watch out. Watch out. There you go. Not on the fridge. Mint. In the bag. I do find that very annoying when a lot of places. Uh, sort of the 
the herbs that drive me up the bananas. But you can, you can actually recycle um, soft plastics now, which is, well, you know, better than not. Still not great, though, is it? Right, let's have a look at this. This is seriously thickening up nicely. It is aggressively hot. I'm going to show you the colour. Oh, yes. Okay. A little bit longer. And then we're ready to plate up. And then we'll have some fun. So, mint leaves, really fine dice. You can keep a couple whole too. Totally up to you. How cool am I have that for fun? Nearly there. Nearly there. <laughs> I love that. Ooh, oh. Can confirm it's delicious. Can confirm. And let me get this, let me bring this to you actually. There's a tea towel, so it is a bit hot. Too sharp. Alright. I'm gonna have to do some camera action here. Look at this. So see the colour on that pineapple and it's really soft. And then see this liquid. I know it's a dark pan, but let's have a look at the colour of that. That has turned a gorgeous sort of like put on camera. Really need to get a camera person to do this. And then what you can do is you just spoon it over the top as you go. As it's starting to reduce, just keep spooning it. Keep sort of hydrating your pineapple so they don't go dry. Um, if you have it on a barbecue, what you can do is make this caramel first, and then as you cook them on the barbecue, uh, as you cook them on the barbecue, you just paint, you paint it. You paint the barbecue, uh, you paint your, um, your pineapples with a brush, and that'll help. Yeah, really, really cool. Really awesome trick to do. This would work with so many other fruits as well. You can do this with watermelon. It's amazing. Char grilled watermelon. Get a little sauce. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right, bring that plug. It's too loud for me. I'm too old for this. Uh, where's my plate there? Okay, let's bring that lower. Let's bring that really low. Let's see if we can, let's be really, let's be really, oh, look at that, hey? What? Look at that. Right, hold tight. I'm getting my, my stuff. I think, don't think it's probably going to be set as much as I'd like, but no stress. You'll get the concept. And the longer you leave it, the better. Yeah, it's not set up. That's okay. Otherwise, I'll be, you know, I'll see you back in the now. Okay, so let's just plate this up. I get my offset spatula. You can use a regular red spatula, whatever you want. Get a nice sort of amount of it, and serving for one person here, or maybe two. It's up to you. Gorgeous little sort of swirl. Get some height if you want. I mean, if it's more set, this will get some really great height, right? So that's that's kind of an important part of it all. Um, I missed a bit just here, but you can't see it because the camera's in the wrong spot. <laughs> right, now you want to do this next bit first. The reason why I, you know, you can jump on the raw sugar bandwagon because when you toast it, it, um, it crystallizes and goes hard. And so when you have a creme brulee at a restaurant, they use this kind of sugar. It's like when you roll, you know, I love rolling stuff in this. So you don't want too much, just a little bit. You can do it once or twice. You can probably do it twice. And we'll get an extra sort of thick layer. And then ready. So gas on, there we go. Coming in hot. So we just want to toast it. And because you're using tofu and not cream, you're not gonna, it's not gonna burn, right? Like it's, sorry, it's, it's not gonna melt. It's not gonna melt and turn to crap. It's actually gonna hold its shape. So as you can see, oh, let's turn this off now. There we go. As you can see, that's completely held its shape. Now let's just do it one more time, cause extra crunch. If you don't have a, 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 a torch and you can't be bothered getting one because you know you make this dish once every so often, there's no point in buying one, you don't need to do it. Just don't add this sugar on top. It'll still be spectacular, I promise, because I'll show you with the syrup that I'm about to put on there, it is well worth it. Okay, so not a little torch, get as much as you can. Awesome, 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 right, off. I am 
extremely excited. And don't worry, it does look a bit darkness. When you get closer, it looks much better. Uh, can you do it very thin to really break into it before eating? Yes, exactly right. So that's the point. So that will be quite thin. I mean, it looks like I put maybe put a bit too much on there, but I promise you it's, it's quite thin uh, and it'll work perfectly. Um, what chai with watermelon? Yes, Shirley, it is awesome. Get a cool little marinade as well. Uh, it is fantastic. And it's also, if you smoke, if you have a smoker at home, smoke watermelon, take the skins off, smoke it. Awesome. Um, yeah, barbecue more fruit, 100%. You know, color in everything creates flavor. Uh, it's not just meat. You know, the constant going, color in meat is what creates flavor. Well, color in everything creates great flavor. That's what you're after. Um, very thin, you can. So yeah, I'll show you when we break into it. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but this looks good. Also, because, the cho because it's such a dark chocolate, um, and it, it isn't a, it's actually quite a, a bitter sweet dessert. Um, and the pineapple just creates this hit of juice. So it's a really cool way of doing it. Especially if you get like a, an underripe pineapple, Paul, go that way. I reckon that's the way to go. Um, the cookbook is, has, is, is off to get printed ish. We're seeing it off to a, that's a complete lie. I don't know why I said that. The cookbook is, is the proposal's done. How does that sound? I'll keep you informed. And there's a TV show coming on Monday, 3.30, and uh, it's all about this world. Right. That is there, right? So we've done that. Crackable. I'm going to get my pineapple pieces. Where's my... No, I don't want to use that. There's a knife for this situation. Look at that. Another one. Hanging off the side. And then... Excuse me, look at my fingers, I know. This syrup. Oh, this rum, beautiful rum, rum syrup. I'm so excited about this. Okay, coconut and buckwheat. This just creates texture that you're really craving with this dish. You can use different types of nuts. You can use, you know, hazelnuts, what a great one. Uh, obviously, you know, Maccas and almonds and the whole lot. Like, they're just, you know, nuts are a fantastic way um, to create texture in a dish like this. Fresh mint, because I love that contrast, uh, but you don't have to. You can put whatever you want. Again, preferably not whatever you want. Maybe coriander is a silly idea. Uh, and then because I just saw them before, I've got these beautiful uh, rose petals, edible rose petals, and it's only because I can, but it creates a really nice sort of aesthetic uh, and then just to finish off let's just do a whole piece of mint leaf because or a couple of whole mint leaves because I think really that sort of individual leaf um, oh my gosh this is so cool right, okay how about I done everything I think I've done everything stop the clock <laughs> uh, right and look at this this is it this is it ladies and gentlemen and um, anyone who's watching, actually, because there is hopefully, there we go. How cool is that? I'll give it a little twirl. So look at the, look at the um, beautiful charring on the pineapple there. Glistening with that syrup. And that, I mean, look, it's been, I chatted for a good 10 minutes at the start because hello, that's me. Um, but we just made a dessert and you could, I mean, there's enough here for, there's enough here for three people, I reckon. And then there's, and that's only because I did that. I still got half a pineapple that I could cook. So you could cook this dessert for five people in half an hour. Um, pomegranates would be amazing. Yes, 100%. Um, yeah, and those, I mean, this is a Christmas dessert, right? Isn't it? Like this, you could, you could make the ganache the day before, put it in the fridge, take it out to get it to room temperature so it's ready to sort of like brulee. You can do it on the table so people can see it. You can have it all prepped and ready to go. You can even have them set on, on plates already if you really want to go that far. Um, and, uh, and you can just wow people with a dish like this. This to me is a, a classic celebratorial style dessert. And the celebration is George just got back from uni today. So that's our celebration. Any excuse will do. <laughs> and, and we're going to love it. It is just amazing. And, uh, and, and if you can brulee it, do it. If you can't, whatever. But I promise you that you can get the, the cheapy sort of uh, $10 ones um relay things let's see if there's any questions i need to mention any more questions out there for this final four of four cook-alongs with me 
My hat's backward. That's how much of a celebration I'm having. Um, keen as mustard. Um, I had to wear a hat today because I just could not have my hair flying through my eyes again and um, uh, and, and, and annoy myself more than anything. Um, but, you know, from, from, the, from the cheesiest not cheese sauces using nutritional yeasts and cauliflowers and all of the spices from the sauce, then the next one... Gosh, it, was so, it feels like so long ago. Cacio Pepe, nutritional yeast. They're beautiful quinoa pastas. The tricolor pasta, epic. I love that. And someone made it just recently. I can't remember who it was and posted me in it. Um, uh, and then uh, what else is there? And then what was next? That's right, the tempeh with the rice, the rice bake. Loved, loved, loved. And then finally, this beautiful one here, the finale. And also, don't forget... The recipes are in all your Source Bob Food stores. There is also a Christmas edition set of recipes coming out soon too. So be sure to jump on those. I've got this um this fruit bake that I'm doing, and it's not it's not your classic sort of like apple crumble or or, or um rhubarb crumble. This is like layers of dry like Source Bob Food dried fruits and sugars and like different types of sweeteners, uh, natural sweeteners, um, with with like peaches and blackberries and dates and currants and raisins and all these things. And then you make this gorgeous orange and lemon juice syrup and you pour it at the top and you bake it in the oven or bubbles up. And then when you let it cool, all the fruits soaks in the juices. And then on the side, you make this epic, like multifaceted dried goods crumble using nuts and seeds and oats and flowers and, um, you know, butters, nut butters or regular butter. And then you bake that. So you have this, you don't have to do this thing where, you know, when you put the crumble on top and everything underneath is kind of mushy and still delicious, don't get me wrong, but it's, yeah. If I can separate them, get beautiful color on the fruit and then beautiful crunchiness on the, on the, on the, um, on the crumble, it is epic. And then I've got a grain salad, which will blow your mind. A beautiful, a really good Egyptian friend of mine told me the salad. And I sold, I, I used to serve it for, uh, like it used to be, what is it called? Unlimited amount at my smokehouse when I open up the smokehouse restaurant. It's this sort of like bulgur wheat with nuts and uh, deep fried raisins and heaps of sauce block food, olive oil, like enough to to know that it's it's good for you. Uh, it's good fats anyway. It's olive oil. It's good fats. And then um, there's a prawn dish on there and there's uh, a gorge that have been marinated oh, in this native bush spice. Uh, whole roasted cauliflower, and then beautiful beans in some sauce bog food, nuts, and preserved lemons. So all the recipes are in the stores. Check them out. If you have any questions, be sure to just send us a message on Instagram. I'm sorry I haven't been able to get to all of you. I know there's a lot there, um, and I, I've missed some of them, I know. Uh, but you, all of you, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here, you know, every single week. And for those who are new to Source, those who are new to these videos, um, it's a network of wonderful, like-minded people trying to change the way we eat. So um, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful Thursday. Have a wonderful festive season, whether you celebrate it or not. Um, but enjoy being with family and close friends. I'm feeling really sad that it's over. <laughs> This is the last one. This is the last one. You want to come say goodbye? She's nervous. You want to come say goodbye? Come give her a wave. No, it's your Final thing. wave. Come on. I'm admiring you from a distance. Okay. She's admiring you from a distance. No. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a wonderful night. Lentil says goodbye, too. See ya. Yeah.